While plenty of people have been marching in the streets since the Supreme Court declared last month that abortion access was no longer a constitutional right, businesses have been reacting as well. In some cases, as with giants like Walmart and McDonald's, with silence that has spoken volumes. But according to a recent examination of more than 1,300 companies, more than 100 are leading on abortion rights since Roe was overturned, announcing policies like pay for employees to travel to states where abortions are legal. I'm joined by the authors of the study, all from the Yale Chief Executive Leadership Institute. Jeffrey Sonnenfeld is its president. Stephen Tian is the director of research. Georgia Hursty is a research fellow focusing on corporate social impact. Jeffrey, Stephen, good to see you. Georgia, good to meet you. Thanks for being here, all three of you. Great to see you again, Jeff. Thanks. Jeffrey, last time you were here, for those who don't recall, you had just completed a study of major American corporations on one extreme that had totally pulled their business out of Russia after the invasion of Ukraine, the other extreme, business as usual. What did you set out to do here after the overturning of Roe? Uh, what we wanted to see is uh, trying to understand who moves first on these issues. There is um, a kind of a, a cynicism among some journalists and some uh, ideologues on the right uh, to try to vilify uh, what they call the woke CEOs. Mm -hmm. The CEOs don't feel that pressure. They're not afraid of reprisals, but different ones respond to different issues uh, as to who's going to be in the front lines. For example, when we, when we spoke before, we were surprised that it was big tech, big oil, and professional service firms that had moved first uh, of those 1,300 companies that pulled out of Russia. Those are not usually on the leading edge of, uh, of social change issues, but there are different reasons why it was they and not fashion and uh, fragrances and ca consumer products the way it usually is. And in, in this case, we thought, let's try to figure out what's common with the, with the, first, uh, with the first movers on this front, because we similarly on, you know, on gun safety or on climate change or on immigration reform or voting rights, it's different organizations who take sure. the lead and then other CEOs follow. Stephen, what was the criterion for uh, including someone on the first mover list? What did the company have to have agreed to do? Well, I think I'll let Georgia jump in on this one as well. But what we're really looking for, Jim, is for companies that have provided uh, an extra level of support for their employees in wake of the decision. And, and that support can take many levels. The most common level of support is agreeing to pay for travel to a different state. And I think my colleague Georgia can jump in with some more specifics there as well. Georgia, do you want to do some jumping? I'll do some <laughs> jumping, yes. One of the other things that was really important to us was looking to see which companies made a public statement, issued uh, issued a release, let us know that, let kind of the world know that they were taking this stance and going to provide additional support to for reproductive health for their employees. And, and uh, Georgia, staying with you, uh, what was the motivator? It, apparently, according to my reading of the reports in your study, it was not some deep ideological commitment to the issue. Is that correct? That is correct. And, you know, it's not to make any comment on people's personal politics or ideology, but it is to say that what we found was that rather than the, these kind of ideological perspectives, it was really the strategic considerations that these companies were making about whether or not they were going to take a public stance on this. What does strategic mean? Meaning well, the bottom line? Is that what it means? Not necessarily. For example, we found that tech companies made up about a third of that initial mover group and that tech companies employees on average are five years younger than the, the national average of other workers. And, and we know that younger people tend to be more supportive of the right to choose. And so that would, is strategic when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to retention, and when it comes to giving potential employees what they want, which is their leaders to take stances. Uh, I, we have some data on what you're talking about. There's a recent monitor, mo morning consult poll about the generational divide of strong support, quote, strong support for companies speaking out about abortion access access, exactly what you say. Gen Z, that's up to 25, 51%. Millennials, 35%, uh, uh, that's up to 41, and you see it drops with Gen X. One last thing for you, Georgia, uh, what was counterintuitive to me is there was not a disproportionate share, or maybe it's not counterintuitive in light of what you said, there was not a disproportionate share of the first movers who were led by women CEOs. Is that not correct? That is correct, and also not disproportionate uh, women on boards. And I think it kind of 
you know, it goes against this, what, what Jeffrey mentioned earlier around companies wanting, to, people wanting to dismiss some of these movements as being woke. And it really is speaking to what the kind of national, you know, movement is around, um, around these issues. So uh, Jeffrey, uh, give us a list of some high profile, I'll call them winners. I'll add a judgment to it. You don't have to. Uh, tell us who some of the high profile first movers have been. Well, they, they include, believe it or not, uh, professional services, uh, finance, uh, uh, and technology are two thirds of the list. Uh, so, which, uh, and that list is about 120 companies that have been first movers. It includes uh, Apple, uh, Intuit, uh, uh, the Microsoft, uh, uh, IBM, say, of, of the tech companies, the finance, uh, JP Morgan, uh, Citigroup, professional services, EY. Uh, uh, Deloitte, uh, uh, KPMG, uh, uh, P uh, Price Waterhouse, uh, PwC, uh -huh. uh, Bain, uh, BCG, uh, McKinsey. And again, we don't usually expect that these companies are always on a frontier of social change, yeah. or, or many times these are the companies who would often rather jump off a cliff than get involved in controversy or social issues. But they have because of the younger workforce. Yeah. I mean, some of these firms, some of these CPA uh, consulting firms, are individually hiring as many as 60,000 millennials a year. And, and as your data just showed from that morning console data is, um, we don't know if this will last forever. We remember what happened to we Woodstockers. Uh, maybe you're too young for that, but I remember the Woodstockers. Unfortunately, I am not to too young for that, but continue, go ahead. <laughs> well, we used to parade around these values as we rode our white stallions of idealism into schools. And as some drove their their, their limousines back out again, they traded off some of those Woodstock values. But there's a belief that somehow there's a, a virtue that will be robust, that where, where this generation shops, uh, where they invest, and where they go to work is very much driven by social image. I think I have a naked photo of you from Woodstock, actually, but we can talk about that <laughs> after the show. You know, Stephen, I want to clarify one point. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is Amazon has also made a statement so, saying they want to support their workers, will pay for them to go to other states. But the catch there is most of their workers are hourly workers who wouldn't be covered by their benevolence. Am I right about that? Uh, there's a lot of nuances um, in, in terms of different degrees of coverage, in, in terms of uh, different health plans and uh, different policies that insurers are working out. And we fully acknowledge that all of those nuances are there. And as with what we saw with the business retreat, some of these nuances do take a little bit of time to work out. But yeah. what's so important to recognize is companies that are taking the right steps in those directions. And, yeah. and that's what the purpose of the list tries to capture. Well, George, I want to get and to another part of the I'm sorry, Jeffrey. What? All what's that? Is their goal, and some of them haven't quite gotten there yet, but you're great to ask that question. Okay, uh, Georgia, uh, one other thing I'm a little, maybe I shouldn't be confused again, very small percentage of this 118, 120 are headquartered in red states, which led me to a conclusion which you may disabuse me of, is they're promising to pay for their workers to go to other states because they won't have to. Is that, uh, it, what conclusion should one draw, if any, from the fact that there's so few that are headquartered in red or likely anti-abortion states? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And obviously we noticed that as well. And I think one of the things for me is, is that looking at kind of the legislatures and the government of these red states and what the implications are for those companies, a lot of the companies in other instances have made public stances. And so again, it comes back to, I think, some of these strategic considerations that the companies in red states are, mm -hmm. are taking. And some of them maybe do have the same the same kind of support for their employees and just aren't coming out publicly about it. I think that is more of the edge that we kind of go to rather than saying that companies in blue states are doing so because they won't have to pay. A lot of these companies also had plans in place before the overturning of Roe and are just kind of re, you know, reestablishing, re letting us know that those things exist. Jeffrey, you know, I, if I, I can jump in on that one. Yes, please. Oh, uh, thanks. Is I completely agree with Georgia. There are some outliers. For example, in Texas, uh, you could see Dell and American Airlines have uh, d raised eyebrows because of their courage to take those positions uh, on this matter, much the way um, Coca-Cola and, uh, and Delta Airlines on voting rights uh, took an early uh, move, in, yeah. and they're based, of course, in Georgia, uh, is uh, that they're going against the, the grain. It's not easy, and I think those CEOs and those boards deserve some extra recognition 
In the blue states, though, as Georgia say, there are governors like uh, Governor Lamont here in, in Connecticut that are, are, are waving around a major campaign trying to attract businesses into a place where uh, women's uh, health is celebrated, child care and many kinds of social issues are seen as, uh, uh, as an attractive place to work. You know, they always see these surveys that talk about best, best states for, for employers uh, mm -hmm. to locate their business. Somebody should be doing a survey, which are the best the best states for people to work in, the best places for employees. Well, you know, uh, Jeffrey, staying with you for a second, broader than just uh, uh, employees making decisions, there are governors like our own, Republican Charlie Baker and like Illinois' Democrat Pritzker, who are actively and publicly encouraging companies in states that don't protect reproductive freedom for women to do whatever expansion they're going to do in their states. Can you see companies making decisions based on that criterion? Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that. I, I, in all uh, candor, I chair something called Advanced CT, which is the state's economic development authority. I co-chair it. Yeah. And we just had a meeting on Friday with three very large uh, corporate relocation services, which I'm often been critical of because I always, I often felt that there's a, they have an incentive just to keep companies moving, and it's often from blue to red states. They are telling us, these three, that are getting a lot of backlash right now from employee groups that are feeding back to their employers. They don't want to move to those red states because of some of these issues that are they're anti-science, if they're anti-education, and if they're anti-free choice uh, and taking rights away from people. So, uh, yeah, I think absolutely it's becoming... A, a critical dimension right now in these corporate relocations. Georgia, Stephen, uh, Jeffrey, congratulations on your work and thanks for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank thank you. you. If you want to see all the 118 or maybe it was 120 companies that have stepped up on this issue, which I strongly encourage you to check out, we've linked to the full list on the YouTube video of this show segment. You can find that at youtube.com slash GBH news.